Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents have built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in to Super Agents Live. Look, today's episode, you are going to love. I really resonated with this. On this episode, we talk about all kinds of stuff. We talk a lot about lead generation. And I'll tell you something, this is a good primer for you to listen to uh, before you uh, go and grab my lead generation product. Um, so we, we talk about lead generation streams and, and uh, to my guest today explains why you should have seven separate channels for lead generation. We break those down. We talk about technology. This guy is a super technical guy. He's always on stage talking about technology and how people can become the true digital agent in 2014 and beyond. Uh, we talk about marketing. We spent some time talking about the future of real estate. And uh, this guy had some really great uh, insights. And we also talk about that one thing, <clears throat> that one thing that, uh, you know, people ask me about all the time, right? What do you look for in a coach? We always hear that you should have a coach. But if you were going to hire one, like, what's the metrics? What do you ask? How do you find the perfect coach? And by the way, I still have one spot for my personal coaching program. So if you're interested, uh, just send me an email to Toby, T-O-B-Y, at Super Agents Live, and uh, we'll see if we are a good fit. Hey, real quick, before we get to this great content, uh, just some... Uh, some housekeeping. Uh, if uh, and by the way, if you are new to this show, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate everybody, all of you, taking the time out of your day and spending it with me. So thanks a lot and uh, welcome if you're new. So here's what we're trying to do. We are trying to win uh, this Inman, uh, Inman.com. They're running a contest or they're asking people for their opinion about what is the most innovative real estate agent app. We want to be nominated. We want to win. The only way for us to get nominated and win is for you guys to vote for us. So I am going to have, I appreciate you doing it. If you do vote for us, and I'm going to make it easy for you, all you're going to have to do, go to superagentslive.com, uh, click on this episode or some of the past ones. I've been I've been asking for this uh, for uh, probably a couple of weeks now, uh, and I'm going to have a big orange button. Just you know, when you get to the episode, there's an orange button that says read more, and those that's the show notes, uh, and I'll have the big button that says nominate the show. <laughs> if you take that time out, here's what I'm going to do for you. Uh, we have our big mastermind. We have our membership site. Now, normally to be a part of uh, that big mastermind where we all share, uh, you know, our stories, our strategies, our, our ideas, uh, you know, we, we looked uh, to new to learn different things as well as, you know, look, sometimes when we're down, uh, we need that friendly hand lifting us up. So normally that is 197 bucks a quarter. I'm going to let you in for free. All you got to do is vote for the show, nominate us for the show, send me a screenshot, <clears throat> and I'll let you in. Now, if you don't know how to take a screenshot, which I understand, uh, send me an email. Most likely, I will trust that you did it if you took the time to send an email out. Okay, that's it. Let's get to the show. Hey, Jeff. Hey, thanks for taking the time out today. Hey, listen. Hey. Are you uh, I gave the audience a br in the intro a brief background. Uh, it, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're working on. I know you have a ton of stuff going on. <laughs> we actually do, yeah. A um, little about my background, um, just to keep it short and sweet, is I started in real estate in 1988, uh, back when I was a young, just in the college days, uh, wore the gold jacket. I think it was probably the best time to learn how to sell real estate because there was no technology at all. You know, we didn't even barely have a fax machine. And, you know, real estate has always been a people business. So we learned really how to talk to people, how to network, how to prospect. And really, that's still the same way today. You know, that's really where it is. So spent about five or six years um, knocking on doors, doing my thing, spent some time in the commercial space, and then kind of migrated with an opportunity into um, the, the tech side a little bit with a company called Bell Atlantic Mobile. And for those who go back that far, you'll remember the brick phones and the flip phones and um, Bell Atlantic Mobile, for those who may not know, turned into Verizon Wireless. Oh. And I was in those early days of, of mobile, you know, so 
for me, it was an opportunity to see where wireless has gone. Um, jumped on the tech bandwagon, if you will, because the internet was just really starting to ramp up. Bounced around to a few big dot coms in some leadership roles and sales roles. And um, after the bust in about 1999, um, between both startups and Fortune Fives, which I was working with, jumped back into real estate and built a team, bought some brokerages, and really kind of leveraged not just tech, but just the knowledge of how to market online, how online worked with my real estate skills, my marketing skills, and everything else. And um, kind of ramped up from there, um, realizing there was a big need for speaking training and helping people migrate to this new evolution of, of technology that's out there now. So, um, you know, they, they do joke with me, Tobe, that uh, they say I speak three languages now because I have that real estate and tech background. They say I speak English, real estate and technology. And they like, <laughs> they, they like the fact that, you know, I've, I walked in the shoes and you know, up until recently even still – um, day to day, either running a brokerage, failing, succe succeeding, and learning how real estate works with the shift of technology. So it's been a fun run. Well, yeah, look, I, I, so it, that's a great story. And I, there's so much there I'd like to get into. But in terms of technology, right, you said that people are migrating toward it. Uh, people want to, but they're not. There, it's not happening, Jeff. I mean, people are, if you look around, I've been on, obviously, for me, I, I get on a realtor's website's Every day, all day long. Uh, most of them are absolutely terrible. Um, uh, almost nobody has a social strategy um, in terms of using technology. You know, it's it. They have a cell phone. That's about it. You know, uh, p people are not using Facebook ads. Um, very few people are using Facebook ads. Very few people are using Google Pay per click. So, in terms of integrating, right? So, there's a lot of people in our audience listening to this today that that want to do something new that want to set themselves uh, uh, apart from the pack what what are the first kind of few steps right talk about the platform or few first few steps people can take to start to really integrate technology into their business well i think the first thing that um you know it, it's changed so fast so you know, back in the day when it really started to evolve and people jumped on, you know, everyone was trying to figure out how to do SEO and how to how to blog and get ranked on Google. And, you know, that shift in the last two or three years between the big powerhouses of portals and Google and pay-per-click, you know, the typical agent, and no disrespect to them, because I know there's some people that could do a really good job at it, but the typical agent just can't compete at that level skill-wise, time-wise, and probably shouldn't even try. Because they become professional bloggers and they get they run themselves out of the business not selling real estate. Right. Uh, they need to learn how to generate leads better through the use of investing in, in the right resources to get leads, but also at the same time, not just focus on that. They still forget that they need to do daily unique prospecting and marketing day to day. You know, they, they try and hide behind technology, sitting there waiting for something to happen with tech, but forget that I still have to go out and network. I still got to go out and talk to these people and build that relationship. It's not all just happening online. Right. Uh, you know, people are all there, but they're missing that point. And I find a big, big shift to where either you're all in on technology and they're not prospecting. Yep. Or they're, you know, new in the business trying to jump on the bandwagon and they're um, not tech savvy at all. And there's just no middle ground. Yeah. I see the same exact thing. And I, I, I th that thing you said earlier, you said hide behind technology. I say that exact thing all the time, you know, using technology for, you know, this is a podcast, you know, this is not an end in itself. What a podcast is, is, is a platform for me. And it's simply a marketing arm, right? It's one piece of my marketing machine, Te yeah. technology in general, right? Whether it is Facebook or Twitter, or whatever, those are all marketing channels. So, so again, so I appreciate you, you outlining that, but, it, um, how do we find that middle ground? You said that people are not doing, you know, there's no middle ground between all in and not doing it. You know, what, what, what does that middle ground look like? Sure. Um, one of the things I really spend a lot of time trying to, in some of my talks or, or training sessions or whatever it might be, um, what I find is the lack of, and this is something I learned myself running the business, is if you're in real estate long enough, you understand what peaks and valleys are in your business. You know, right. you got three closings. Now you got nothing for two months because you spent all your time trying to close those deals. And you got these big valleys. Um, I hate valleys. You, they're too deep. You can't keep cash flow coming in. So what I've learned is most people only have three to four streams of leads from different resources. And those might be, you know, your referrals, your past clients, your online leads, 
and maybe one other resource they're they're buying Zillow ads or something like that. There's just not enough streams. And coming from the book, Multiple Streams of Income, which you've probably read years ago, I've read a bunch of times, um, I've taken an approach where I have a, a presentation called Seven Streams of Leads, Multiple Streams of Leads. Most agents need three to four more streams of leads from multiple sources to keep their funnel really full. And it'll alleviate the dips in those valleys to be much more shallow, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and those those other streams of leads need to come from other resources. Again, not eggs in one basket. And what I'm learning is most, on average, have three or four. I need to now show them, and we can maybe show them yeah. how to add three or four more to their pipeline that are different groups of people through networking and marketing that they've never had before or access to. And that helps, and that makes a difference between your average agent and your top producer. I would love to go over that because look, when you have, you know, when you have, let's say a three pronged approach, you're like, Hey, I have my farm and I'm calling it, I'm door knocking and I'm mailing it. Well, that's all great. That's, you know, but if you, I, I totally agree with that. And, and one point, right, this, you, you, you mentioned this porpoising effect, right? You know, you, you bounce up and you go down the yeah. farther down you go, right. It, that, that extends the timeline of that valley, right? So you have two things working there. You have the depth of that valley and then you have the length of that valley. So, yeah. so let's let's what are those seven streams let's go over each one um as you see it sure and i even use mine as what mine used to be as an example okay. just to show the difference of it so i'll try and keep it fairly short but no it's okay um, yeah they can replace you know the my concepts or, or our concepts together with whatever stream it might suit their needs okay. so my my regular streams and i'll jot these down as we go like just let's go to the obvious ones first yeah. you know one is a farm area which i used to farm you know weekly um most people still do not farm effectively. Agreed. They have farm inconsistent, no discipline, but mine I was pretty persistent on. I, I, I really liked farming. Um, done a little different today, but still farming is, is farming. I had my sphere. That's number two. So my sphere was core. We all have a sphere, past clients, all that good stuff. Um, I had obviously web leads was a third stream. And when I identify a stream, uh, Toby, it's it's a different group of people altogether. So it's not an overlap of, well, my past clients and my sphere. No, different people that I don't normally don't talk to. Got it. So web leads being three. Now for me in my market, um, I had belonged to a BNI group, which was obviously entrepreneurs. You know, I don't know if everybody's familiar with BNI, but it's a networking group with 20, 30 other individuals, different businesses referring business to each other. M most real estate agents, I hate to say it, probably won't be happy with it because it starts at seven in the morning. Realtors don't like to get up early, but it's an, it was an opportunity of different business people for me to generate branding and marketing opportunities and get business. So BNI, a networking group, was my fourth. And, and, and just and just let me just jump in there real quick. I, I, I think that is awesome. I'm glad you brought that up. There's so many things that people can go out and do, right? So you're, you're, for you, it was your BNI. It was, this is where your networking group. But if everybody is unfamiliar with meetup.com, you can go yeah. to meetup and there's tons of meetups in your city. Uh, and, and those happen at all times. You know, it doesn't have to be in the morning. It can be at night. Everybody should go. I mean, would you agree that everybody should go and have, for you, your BNI, this bucket, should everybody have this networking bucket as part of their strategy yeah okay. i agree awesome. tons of resources so then what i started to look at in order to get my seven streams of leads concept down was okay where am i missing groups of people that are in my backyard and in my neighborhood so for me i turned to the school systems which you know and i don't go to the school systems to help to generate leads i find things that i could get passionate behind and help build something relationship wise that eventually will turn into leads because of relationships. So I don't want people to mislead. I'm trying to just do things for leads, but, but walked into the school system one day, uh, this is years ago, and just simply said, hey, I got young kids in the school. Even if you don't have kids, walk in and ask, listen, what can I help out with project wise, group wise? And it turns out at the same time, our, our school had a group called um, the Hampton Township Education Foundation. I didn't know what it was. It was raising money for the school so that if they didn't have enough money in their budget, we had a board that can donate the money we raised to the school system to help the kids grow and the school grow. Perfect opportunity for me just to help, you know, giving back to the community, which I love to do. And also it got me in front of people like teachers and superintendents on a monthly basis, held the meetings in my own office. And it was just a fabulous way to network in a different group. So that was another stream that created for me was the school system. Got it. Um, one, two, three, four, five, five, six for me. 
Um, six for me was I knew I, I didn't have relationships really built with the townships that I was in. I mean, I knew people, but not a lot. So I did the same thing, walked into the, um, the town hall, introduced myself and said, listen, what can I get involved with? I'm not politically tied here, but it um, turns out food drive was a huge need in town to take leadership role there and also needed a destination for food drop, for helping the people in my community through holidays and through tough times. Great opportunity. My office became the food drive drop, which is perfect because now I got people coming to my office, walking in my door saying, hey, we're here to kind of help. That was another stream of people I had no facilitation with. So that was my sixth. And lastly, for me, um, another very successful group um, from a hobby standpoint is I like to shoot a lot of archery, 3D archery, if you're familiar with, you know, shooting bows and arrows. And I found a group called the, the Appalachian Bowmen, 60 some odd gentlemen and women that just passionately shot once a week as a group, got together, no talk of business or work or nothing, just really having fun, doing what we love to do. And I'm telling you, because I simply built great relationships by just things in common, it wasn't more than months later, almost on a weekly basis, someone would walk out to the parking lot and say, Jeff, listen, I know you're in real estate, but can we chat afterwards? I got some questions about my mom's house or my dad's house, and I need some help. And that relationship, different group of people that I would never get to meet and know, turned out to be my seventh stream of people and seventh stream of leads. So those are mine, you know? Yeah, look, I, I absolutely love that. And, and you know... What I love about that whole story there, Jeff, I mean, I, I love you breaking down the streams and I want to get into what you think uh, you know, um, the perfect stream is, if there's such a thing. But you got involved with the school. You got involved with, uh, you know, uh, your hobby group. You got involved with, you know, you went down to City Hall or whatever. You did all these things really to help out. You wanted to give back. And as a byproduct, it helped your business. And I think too many people, you know, I have a guy that I coached and uh, and. Uh, he went and joined a church and he joined a church to get deals. And he, and he went there for a month and he said, man, I don't even know why I'm going here. I'm not getting any business. I'm like, Whoa, hold on, man. that is yeah. such the wrong viewpoint. So I, I, I love that you, you did these things truly to help out. So, yeah. um, from, from the, uh, let's go to your third one, web leads. Um, certainly, you know, back in the, you know, th I mean, this stuff changes so fast that, uh, you know, where to go get web leads is is different, you know, today than it was, you know, uh, three or, or six months ago. W what do you think today? Wh where should people, how should people focus on that piece of it? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and for those who are actually keeping track, I just want to see if they're paying attention. I actually only named six. So I'll make sure I give you the seventh one when we're done. Um, oh, go, the, go, go. Sorry. Go, go. Jump on the seventh. Oh, sorry. All right. Seventh one real quick was just simply the sporting, um, the sports field of, of, um, school systems attached to schools of so sports. I helped either sponsor teams for, you know, 300 bucks or coached with teams and really had a bunch of little fun kids running around with my names and branding on their shirts and passionately just helped kids coach. Also a different group of people and a really aggressive group of people. If you know parents that are related to sports, totally a huge place to be. Yeah. Um, again, not for leads, but just connecting with parents. So um, that was my seventh for those who are keeping track. Got it. Um, Got it. Okay. So web leads, here's my, here's my thought on this. And some people will really disagree with me and, and I don't care because not in a bad way, but I really am passionate about how I feel about this. Um, back in the day, we didn't have the big portals. So I always said to myself this, Toby, if, if you gave me $5 and I gave you a $10 bill back, would you be happy with that? I would, I would borrow as much money as I could. Right. We could, if we did this live and I've done this live on stage, you know, you know, we could exchange that all day long. You yep. would just keep doing it. Right. Yep. So I've always looked at, okay, look, you got to spend some money in this, in this business. There's just no doubt. Nothing's free all the time. So back in the day, I always vested as another stream of my web leads might've been housevalues.com or one of the resources where I was getting, you know, leads for listings or leads for buyers, a little bit more, you know, antiquated back then. But let's face it, if I got 10 or 15 or 20 new leads, you're not all great. But if I, if I nurtured them and talked to them and I got five or six new listings, I would have never have had ever because I just didn't have that resource. It added to my funnel as that other stream of, of leads and income that I can network and work into deals later down the road. So as things progressed into the Zillows and truly is and Realtor.coms, my thought was this. And there are people who have such a challenging time trying to buy into the concept and they feel, oh, well, they're taking my leads and they're stealing my leads and they're doing all this nonsense. I say, listen, you're looking at it the wrong way. If I can get five or 10 or 15 new potential leads from that group and close three or four more deals I never had, 
game on because those are five deals. Truly, it might be five more deals. Realtor.com might be five more deals. And it's adding to that pipeline where I wouldn't have had them. I never have that kind of manpower to have that resource available. Whereas some people look at that resource as I'm anti them. And I think they're absolutely nuts because if I spend $1,000 a year and I can close a deal for five grand, even if it's one deal for five grand, you and I would do that transaction all day long. Absolutely. Give me a grand, I give you five back Yep. all day. So I wanted to find how many of those resources I could do. So people say, well, what's my favorite? I mean, I, I have my favorites and I won't you know, play sides here, but I would invest in all of them at some point to see which I get the best return on and any of them I get a return on, I'm staying with. Because it's more, it's more than I had. So I leverage the portals because of their networking with the consumer, which many of us don't have that power to do. We don't have that manpower to get to the consumer the way they do. So those are my critical points where I'd be investing. I don't care if it's 50 bucks or a thousand bucks. A return is a return is a return. And I'm in. If I can get two more, two more, two more, six more deals to my pipeline, takes me to another level I didn't have, period. Right. And, and look, you know what you said earlier? You were talking about farming. You said, hey, people don't are, are not farming correctly. You know, yep. they're, they're inconsistent. And I think that is the problem. If, if somebody says, OK, listen, I'm going to I'm going to 50 bucks or a thousand bucks, whatever it is, I'm going to start using I'm going to start buying ads on Zillow, whatever it is. Yep. Um, they do it for three months and they're like, it's not working. I just threw away my money and they move on. But, you know, consistency w with marketing is everything. It, it takes a, it does take a long time. Just like, you know, if, if we actually held, you know, new agents accountable that way, we would never have some top producers in our industry that are here now. If you were a brand new agent and I say, I'm only giving you three months to produce or you're out, we'd lose half the industry. Right. They need a year, two years to, to nurture stuff. You should treat a, an investment the same way. You know, you if you don't give an online portal or a lead source six to 12 months almost at minimum, especially farming, you're not going to really get the value out of it. It's just not going to happen. Right. So, um, so and again, and, and a lot of people, right, they're, they're, I, I'm glad you said that. I totally 100% agree with you. Um, and for most people, it is, it, it comes down to finances, right? You know, whether again, it's 50 or 500, um, they just don't have the cash. So can somebody, if somebody just has 50, you know, if they say, okay, listen, I'm going to dedicate $1,000 total, uh, for this year, this, this, or for the next 12 months and they break it up and they say, Hey, that's 60 bucks a month, whatever it is, uh, 45 bucks, whatever. Um, uh, can, I mean, is that enough? I mean, is 50 bucks a month on Zillow or truly or, or red, red, whatever it is, is that, I mean, can that actually make an impact or no? You know, yes and yeah, for the most part, anything can make an impact even at that number. And some may say, you know, it's not enough, but there may be a partial zip code you can get. But you got to look at it again and measure the return. If I spend 50 bucks and I even got a partial zip code, right? Uh, you know, a third of a zip code somewhere. And maybe you got to go to a secondary zip code to make it more affordable or a secondary resource to make it more affordable, you know, off the beaten path a little bit. At the end of the day, again, if I spent a thousand bucks, what do I really need to get a return out of that? Right. Over a year, over a year. Yep. I could actually get two rentals and actually make a return on that. So all things are relevant, but it's also two more rentals I never had. So the the problem agents have is they don't necessarily track effectively their lead systems. Yes. They don't even know where. So, you know, after they're spending a grand, they don't know where the stuff came from. So when it's time to renew, they go, no, I can't afford another thousand, but not realizing they had a dozen people from that resource and never knew it or never acknowledged it. Right. So, so here's what we, so we have Zulia, we have uh, Zulia, we have <laughs> Zillow, we have Trulia. Uh, we you know we can buy uh, Google pay-per-click, which pay -per -click, yeah. is, is expensive. Uh, and we have Facebook ads. Um, out of those four, you know, if I had a thousand bucks, where do you think I'm, I should spend that, that grand? Well, you know, it's, it really depends on your market. And, and I'm, I have to be a little vague here only because it's an unknown answer. Some markets are going to have better depth of penetration with those platforms. But, um, you know, Facebook ads are not very expensive if you know how to leverage them too. Right. Um, really focused. I mean, the criteria and the narrowing down of target audience with Facebook ads is really supreme to narrow that down. It's crazy. I mean, you can, you can, if, you know, if you kind of understand it, you know, you can say, Hey, listen, I want to target a, a woman who is pregnant and is um, 35 years and older. Right. That's how crazy it is. 
and spend like three bucks a day if you want or two bucks a day right. and, and just have a marketing opportunity that at, at 30, 50 bucks a month that's, you know, again, measurement's going to be important because you're not really savvy enough to really figure it out. So you really got to measure and look at your, your data after you're done. But that's a really effective way to get some stuff going. And I think where agents make a mistake here is they might play with ads and they have this cool little ad, but they have no call to action or no lead to capture somebody to talk to. They, they don't have a landing page set up. They don't have a lead right. capture page. And they've got, oh, I got 512 views and hits, but I didn't capture anybody to talk to. So what good is that? Right. You know? So they're missing the marketing point of capturing people to, to call and pick up the phone with. Right. And I'm again, like you're ahead of me. That that was exactly my next question because you mentioned housevalues.com. So you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna tar- I'm gonna have the right targeting. I'm gonna spend five bucks a day. On, let's just take Facebook ads because they're cheap. Yeah. <clears throat> um, um, Talk to us about the next steps, right? So uh, talk to us about landing pages, what that page should look like uh, versus what most people do today. Well, the simplicity of this is, and there's systems that are already built, you know, that have platforms in place that are set up already. But in a creative mindset, it's not that hard. You really want to set up a landing page, um, whether it's on leadpages.net or Unbounce, I think is another good site. I use leadpages.net. So um, Okay, so you're savvy with that. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, think about what the consumer wants. You don't have to get super creative. What do they always want to know? They want to know what my house is worth. How's the market? Um, what's selling in my neighborhood? You know, and it could be really simple, like simply find out what your neighbor's home sold for. No obligation, no nothing. Click here. Boom. They You can have a form, of, you know, name, email, address, and everything else. And all you're really doing to them is providing a fancy set of MLS data to them or – Maybe you're a subscriber to Top Producer and you get Market Snapshot pumped out to them. Give them something they want. Lead them to something where they say, hey, I'll put my email in for that information. And they might not be ready now. But it's a body you have to talk to today that you never had to talk to yesterday. So you got to have that call to action for something they want to know and want to find out more about. Right. And, and, the, and, the, and the beauty of that, even if these people are not ready or they're just curious or whatever – if you are an aspiring agent, the, it's it's so critical that you that you begin to build your list, your database, and people do, people are don't people are not focusing on that at all. So yeah. um, you know you have to. So I, I again, I, we're in sync here in terms of our thinking. Um, <clears throat> why don't people? I mean, this stuff is not magic. I mean, maybe a lot of people have not heard of lead pages. Yeah, Nin- it's nineteen bucks a month. Um, there's a lot of people who have heard of them and they know that they need to build their list. What is it with these agents? They, they, they want to win. They want to be successful, but they don't, they don't, they don't do that stuff. I mean, w- w- what is it about the mentality of a real estate agent? That they, they don't take that action. It, that's awesome. You're right. Because I'll tell you, actually, I was literally yesterday, I was coaching a top producer, um, yesterday for several hours. We, we had a commitment. To, it's not not a normal coaching session, but I made a commitment to someone to kind of really help them through. Um, and they're really a great producer. The biggest thing, and it's, it's an exercise for me because I'm a big believer, no matter how old I get, how experienced I get, I'm always, I always have to be a student of this, of this business. So I, I, although I spent time educating them, I was also a student to learn why. And they don't have the discipline or the time where they get distracted so quickly to actually execute these resources. The execution is the biggest word I can say about where we lack in this industry. And when I spent time with this individual yesterday, it may have been three or four hours. It, you know, he says to me, Jeff, this was amazing. And I felt I didn't even accomplish a ton. He's like, you know, I would have never even gotten a third of this done. I'd have gotten frustrated and gone on to something else. At least we've got a great focus moving forward. And he was thrilled that we actually executed a few different strategies. And I was like, wow, okay. So it's execution. Yeah. It's, it's discipline and execution where they lack. And uh, that's huge in the industry right now. Yeah. I mean, look, I find that in, with my students as well, right? We, we uh, you know, we outline a strategy, we talk about tactics and uh, I, it might be literally just a 30 minute call. And they're like, oh my God, like it, that was like life changing. I'm like, well, really? Yeah. <laughs> think, you know, it wasn't that much. So, so it's discipline, time, execution. I can under, I can, and I can understand that, right? Right. They might have the discipline, but in terms of, of, of taking that time or carving out that time to execute, it's tough because look, if we're doing it right, if we're doing it the Jeff Lobb style, right, we have our farm and we, we need to be consistent. We need to be consistent with our, you know, marketing to our, our sphere. Um, we need to build the, 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 um, tactical pieces for capturing web leads, 
our network, our school systems, right? And that's you know we're gonna we're gonna volunteer at the school as well as um, uh, city hall for you. And, and then we have a hobby group. That's a that's a full full plate. How yeah. does somebody how does somebody look at all those things and say, listen, Jeff, I agree with you. I want to implement those. How does somebody go about organizing that? I know that's a crazy question, but. No, it, it's not. But that's why I think we use this uh, terminology so loosely when we say you need a coach or you need this or that because, you know, everyone's trying to sell coaching. Everyone's trying to do this kind of stuff. But, you know, the effectiveness of a, of a real good coach, let's face it, there's good real estate agents. There's not so good real estate agents. There's great coaches. They're not so great coaches. The goal is that motivation and accountability to say, here's what you're going to go do and you're going to do it by this. Get it done. And I myself need a coach to keep me focused on certain things. And it may not even be a coach about business. It might even be a coach about my health. You know, I have a health coach that just says, listen, you're going to run your two and a half miles today. Not only do I, you're going to prove it to me, send me a Google map picture of you tracking it. I want to see it done. And it's done by 12 noon today. And I feel like, holy crap, I got to go do this. Like it's that <laughs> it's, I, I got it. And he's right. That's going to hold me accountable because you know what? I can get busy doing a thousand other things and that will become secondary. And I'll never do it. Yep. And it could even be that, and I'll tell you how I get motivated. They even, my coach will even send me that text message that says, listen, 12 noon, get it done. And I'm like, man, I feel bad. It's that I got to go do it. So an agent needs to understand how to do this. And the distraction in, the, in this business will drive you out of the business if you don't focus. Right. So you got to have someone who helps you push, push along to get it done. I, I, I again, we're in sync. I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, so you, earlier you said, you know, on this, on our show, uh, almost every single top producer that has come on the show has a coach or they say, Hey, listen, you should go get a coach. Um, yes. I, again, I told you in our pre-chat that I've had Tom Ferry, Mike Ferry, Bob Corn. I've had those coaches on because I've really tried to, to find out what makes a good coach. And in your mind, you, you know, early you alluded, you said good coaches, bad coaches. What makes a good coach? If somebody's looking out there and goes, hey, listen, I know I need to, to find a coach. But, you know, what kind of questions, what should they be looking for? Well, I, guess, I think it first starts off with their personality. I think the first thing is a good, you know, Q&A about what motivates them. Not just um, there's no one size fits all. There's some people I don't feel I can help and coach. So not everyone's suited for me. Um, and vice versa. They may not want me because of personality, um, but I have to make sure that they're really ready, willing, and able to take criticism. They really want to be helped and they want to be pushed. Um, I am not, you know, every coach has a different personality and they're not all created equal. There's some fantastic people out there with different styles. You know, I am a real big fan of um, a get done now kind of stuff. I like to communicate, sometimes overly communicate. And those um, individuals have to be prepared and really accept being pushed a little bit. Um, that comes from kind of my sports coaching over the years with the kids and growing up trying to get them to another level. And I've watched some kids aren't going to ever get to the next level. The ones who want to are the ones that will come back to you when they graduate college and go, coach, you changed my life. And that's kind of the stuff I look for based on my personality. So. I think it's that interview process in the very beginning to see if there's a fit between the two um, individuals based on that style. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. Um, what you started with is you said, you know, go through the Q&A and find out what motivates them. And, 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 and what I'm, here's what I'm getting at, right? Knowing your why. If, you know, everybody out there, if you're in real estate or whatever industry you're in, if you're going to win – for you personally and meet your big goals, you, you have to be very clear on your why. Why are you doing this, right? And if you yep. know your why, <clears throat> you know, you'll figure out a way to organize the seven streams. How do you, how important do you think that is? And how do you uncover that in your students? Um, I think the first thing we uncover it is um, we have that conversation about where, A, where their business is coming from, has been coming from, because sometimes they don't know. Um, so it's that whole mechanism of, you know, I haven't looked last year or the last two years. I think it's from referral. I think it's from this, but it's really skinning it down to, no, let's dig deeper. Did that come from a listing that you sold? So are they really coming from listings or past referrals? Right. Some people go, it's just a referral. I go, okay, but from where? Oh, it's from a listing you sold a year ago. That was the referral. So you're telling me though, it's not just a referral. It was from a listing. So now more listings are going to get you more referrals, Right. And then we dive into, guess what we need more of now? It's more listings, not just referrals. So we really have to, most agents don't understand where it's really coming from. Um, and the goal of working those referrals is people think they're going to try and work that referral um, 
for their business. They're missing the opportunity. If the right relationship is there, it's not that person. It's the 300 people that they know if done effectively, I have access to as that agent to, to get that referral. Um, I get so nuts and, and disappointed when I myself get emails and I got one literally this morning and I screenshot it as an example, although I will white out the logo and the person's name. Um, if I get like one more recipe sent to me as a drip campaign, no disrespect, but I don't need recipes. I don't, <laughs> I, not that I don't like to cook or any of that nonsense. That is not communicating with me right. the way I can be communicated with. Just stop sending it to me. Right, but right, right. They think I'm in a system. They think I'm doing through the motions. I'm sending recipes for the next three years of my life. I get annoyed by it. So stop. I love that. Yeah. And, and, and for me, that kind of points to social, right? So if you, you know, everybody should be, and, I, and I'd like to hear your opinion on, on the social platforms out there, but you, the voice that you use on Facebook is different than the you use on Twitter, right? You have to know, know what audience you're speaking to. Um, again, pointing to the whole, you know, I'm going to send a recipe out to everybody. Um, what earlier to, to back up for a second, you were talking about knowing your numbers, right? You were said, Hey, you need to track. You need to know where your deals or your referrals are coming from. Is, is, is tracking, uh, a, a component that most people are not implementing? Yes. Um, most people don't even have a good, accurate, even database. And while I don't like databases from a detail standpoint, cause I'm not that personality. I always had a good detailed assistant or admin or whatever we want to call that individual. They were literally the critical backbone to my business, um, to help me organize and facilitate. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's not just knowing where their source came from. I think the example I used is better is they have to dig three level or two more levels deeper to really understand where that came from. They just think first level. It came from, right. it was a referral from John. Okay. Dig two more levels. Ask that more effective question. Any referral you get, where did it come from prior and how did that one get here? And you're going to start to see where it really started to sprout from, not necessarily how you got it. Got it. But okay. here's the question. And you can ask this to anybody. Where do they put that when they find out? <laughs> like, okay, it came from this resource. Now what? They don't have a, they don't have a place to manage that. Yeah, right. So where should they? I mean, what what? How should they manage that? Where do you think they should put a Google Drive or you know Dropbox or where do you think that should be put? I mean, it could be obviously if you have a good you know. There's a lot of CRMs out there. Okay. Um, most don't even use ten percent of any good CRM. Um, but you know, if you have a top producer, it's great. You got to put it there. Um, it could be as simple as you know an Evernote folder for each client. Um, it could be um, you know. It's, it's just got to be a system that fits your personality. It could simply be an app on their iPhone that tracks stuff like that too or, or some device. Um, CRMs are great, but most people don't effectively use them, so I can't even recommend one over the other. But they need to have a specific place to understand the resource of those leads. Um, a good example, um, a company called Five Street. Um, have you heard of Five Street? You ever I, play around? No, no, I haven't. Oh, Five Street. Okay, well, Five Street's a... Um, Real good resource for, I think they have both an agent product and a, and a broker product, but it, it not only tracks leads, it sucks in the leads. Um, so if, let's say from 40 different companies, it pulls them in from Zillow and Trulia and Craigslist or whatever you got and sucks them all into one dashboard and kind of measures, you know, where those deals are coming from, where they're, you know, where their resources with detailed information of those clients. So it's, it's, it's a resource where I don't have to say, well, I got some Zillow leads. I got to track that on my spreadsheet. I got some leads from walk-ins and open houses. I got to put that in a spreadsheet. It, this is a resource and dashboard that just pulls them all in. And I got one place to manage all my leads. So that might be an effective way to at least have one place to put it all to manage that kind of content. Got it. Okay. That's good. I, 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 I love that you brought that up. I, that's, I've never heard of it. And I'm sure that most uh, of the people out there haven't heard of that. Yeah, it's pretty affordable too. So. So listen, Jeff, you've been around for a long time. You, you, you've been through the dot-com burst. You've been through the, you know, the 08, you know, housing meltdown. You know, yep. in terms of staying agile and, and adapting to new environments, um, you know, is that something that, because that, uh, look, it, when 08 happened, Lehman failed, banks were going down. A yep. lot of people that had been successful uh, in 06, um, they're, they just, they went away. They, they, they got gone. Um, 
it, let's talk about being adaptable because I mean, and, I, and the reason why I want to talk about this, Jeff, is you know you went from dot com, you went from technology and real estate. You have this crazy rich background. You know, how do you keep moving and and uh, and jiving to 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 for the current environment? Sorry, I, that was a long question. No, <laughs> that's all right. Um, you know, the best experience you can have, and I you know I've been through college, bachelor's degree, all that kind of fun stuff. The best education you can have is really just living and getting beat up on your own street smarts wise. I mean, I've I've made a boatload of money. I've lost a boatload of money. I've taken a bath. I've learned just by really, you know, entrepreneur wise, getting beat up in the trenches. You learn by that. And, you know, I don't carry that kind of ego that says, you know, I'm some kind of magical person on a stage. You know, I'm pretty transparent to say, I'll tell you the reasons why I failed. I tell you the reasons why I got beat up. And I'll also tell you the reasons that made me successful too, because there is no magic pill in this business. So, the way I try and keep up with things is I am always – my mindset is a very visual mindset. I'm not a detailed guy person-wise, so um, I need help with the details. I am always looking two to three years ahead. Where where are we going? How is it going to get there? And what resources do we need to stay ahead of that curve for those who want to be there? And there's only a certain percentage that are ever going to follow that where the majority is going to be left behind. But I can't change people who don't want to be changed. You can never fight that. So I've always just said, keep looking forward and how can we make a difference? And I don't get stuck in the now. I get I look really two to three years out and try and figure out how we're going to make take advantage of that opportunity. So, well, that's great. So what do you if we look, you know, if Jeff Lobb looks 36 months down the road, what do you see for the industry? How you know what? Look, Zillow's making a lot of changes. I mean, there's there's. I don't know what Zillow is going to end up being. They're certainly going to be more than they are today. But, you know, what do you see three years from now? Um, I see almost an entirely, um, well, you know how when we, when everyone started with the, the web, the numbers started to change. Like, you know, 70% of people are searching online. Then it's, you know, 85% of people searching. Now it's 90-something percent. Um, same thing with like an iPad. How many people have an iPad? You know, and it always every year it's like now the majority are going to have an iPad. Right. Uh, I see us pretty much being almost an entirely mobile platform um, in our universe of day-to-day -day people. I don't care what business you're in. It's going to be uh, almost a really completely leveraged mobile platform. Um, so mobile is going to get super savvy, uh, much faster speeds. Video is going to get much more efficient. So video will be a prime source, including marketing video online will enhance because of that technology stepping up. So Real estate professionals struggle with video. They're intimidated by it, but that is a leveraged opportunity for those who want to differentiate video. And, um, you know, I see the big portals continuing to take advantage um, and getting even actually bigger as a resource because consumers have a great experience with them. And they'll continue to have a great experience based on what they're delivering, where most real estate agents have a website that not only cannot compete with them, they don't even have a good experience when I'm on the site. So I see the typical website platform of a $50 a month website phasing out to almost no value. And you're almost going to have to be leveraging um, social marketing, pay-per-click marketing, and or portal marketing to really be creative and get that consumer to call you. If you don't do that, the only way you're going to get that consumer is based on a local focus, meaning I got to get them at the sign call. I have to get them maybe with a new iBeacon technology that comes out where I'm going to capture somebody right in front of a house. That's the only way I'm going to capture them. I'm going to have a hard time getting them searching the web because the competition is too great for most real estate agents. They just can't compete. Um, and they sh probably should not try and compete because the time invested in that will never. I mean, who's going to go out and beat Realtor.com and Zillow with the resources they have as a typical agent. Don't get me wrong. There's some great SEO guys out there cranking away on Google with long tail keywords and all that other stuff. But the majority is what I talk about. Not going to happen. So you got to focus on local, local, capturing them there, which means you better have a good mobile resource and a mobile site and then leveraging other marketing techniques like pay-per-click and or, you know, video advertising and everything else. That's where I see the next two or three years going. Got it. I love it. Yeah. Being, being hyper local. And if, if somebody is hyper local and they, and they took advantage of what you said earlier, you know, doing videos, uh, around like the school that's in your farm, uh, you know, that's, yep. that's how I, you know, people are going to differentiate. I, I, I agree. So, um, really we're, we, we got five minutes left. You know, what do you, th what's working for you and your business right now, Jeff? How are you building the Jeff Lobb brand? Sorry. How about, how about, how about those two? 
Yeah, sure. Um, what I find is um, I've really uh, passionately got behind a few of the big um, you know, conferences that are out there right now, um, trying to gain some stage presence to not just to build me up per se, but to try and deliver good value with real estate boards. And, and oh, sometimes you only get 20 minutes or a half hour to share some content, um, trying to deliver them tools and effective ideas in 20 or 30 minutes that's going to help motivate them to do something and or to go get some business. So leveraging the big um, platforms in the industry like your your Inman Connects and your um, Agent Reboots and um, working with some of the real estate boards, speaking and, and that kind of stuff. Um, I've also leveraged, you know, doing training events um, and a project I've been working on for several years is trying to work on execution. And I've got kind of a private label platform right now. It's, it's privatized, but um it's a, it's a video tutorial training platform I've got called Technically Real Estate, where it's kind of my person. It's me. It's my personality on video, very simply talking you through tutorials, showing you on the screen exactly how to do the stuff we talk about. Because at the end of the day, you're going to sit there and get distracted, and you're going to go, I forgot how to do that. I don't know what button to click. <laughs> and you're going to just move on. So I've got tutorials and a video library that's being built to kind of leverage that. So, um, cool. That's, that's one And my last project is I'm launching. It's just a real soft launch coming up this Friday. I'm trying to launch soft this Friday just to kind of test it out. Uh, I'm doing a, a Google hangout called uh, office hours with Jeff, and it's just going to be an hour hangout with Q and a coming in by text, having topics and people asking questions, giving solutions and a real casual form as if we were just hanging out, you know, talking casually. So, um, I'm going to be posting that on social probably tonight and tomorrow just to do a soft launch this Friday at one o'clock Eastern um, office hours with Jeff. So, Look, you know, what's funny is I've been thinking about doing the same thing. Um, so I, I love that. I'm going to tune into it. Um, so how are you going to promote that? Because, you know, for me, let me tell you, let me tell you the, what I'm thinking about doing. And, I, and I'm building a, I'm building a, a product myself right now. And I'm, and I may cut some of this interview out for the product, but I'm going back to the, I've had, 50, 60 people I've interviewed, I'm going back to them saying, listen, let's just talk about lead gen. So I'm creating a, a like a 16 hour product on lead generation, right? That, mm -hmm. That's going to be three ninety nine or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But in order to promote that, right, is I was going to uh, Facebook ads, create a webinar, right? They have people on the webinar. Tell them, you know, you know what their appetite, 30 minute webinar. And then at the end of it, then then pitch the product. Um, yeah. How are you going to promote this this office hours with Jeff? Because I think it's awesome to build your brand, to, to increase your audience, all that stuff. Yep, um, I'm going to probably leverage uh, many of the stuff. I'm going to use a, um, a a lead page capture form. I'm going to promote uh, mainly on the social, and I've got a pretty good database of people I've either spoken to or coached. Or um, the initial this Friday launch, and I'm really doing it on purpose to do a soft launch. I don't want thousands of people on this call or this uh, Google Hangout. Because I'm going to be testing some stuff, a little trial and error. So I'm going to just kind of play around with a real soft, small group. And then um, the next couple of weeks, I will ramp up with a branding. So I've got some videos done, some promotional um, videos made uh, to launch on Facebook ads. And um, I've done from uh, cool video intros and I've got some, you know, cartoon um, animations that were done. And a, co a couple different promotions I'm using, but it'll mainly be um, video email through BombBomb. I'll be using. I use BombBomb as my video email platform huh. that will deliver promotion, and I'll be using um, social to pretty much leverage the majority of the push. Now, when you say social, I mean, are, are we talking about ads? Or are we are we talking about just posts to your to your uh, followers and friends? No, it'll be ads. I'm not a okay. big podcast on my social pages. I, I I'm a real big. I, I may drip something in there once or twice, but I'm not going to be jamming it away and just, you know, harassing people online. That just annoys people. So. <laughs> well, cool, um, man. Well, listen, everybody tune in, you know, uh, well, or don't tune in. I don't know. Give it a couple of weeks uh, and uh, tune into Jeff Lobb Office Hours with Jeff. Hey, Jeff, uh, we always ask for a book recommendation, right? I mean, you said you, you always need to be learning. <laughs> if I'm an agent out there and I have 25 bucks, what, what book should I go buy? Oh, wow. Um, you know, I, let me take a quick peek at some of the books I've just read. I got so many that have run through my particular head right now. Give me a second to um, see which one might be my favorite. Um, I would probably say most recently, I've read a lot of the big, big um, name books that are out there. Um, but if I had to say something locally, not necessarily from a real estate agent's perspective, 
Um, I think from a business perspective, happens to be a friend of mine too, and it's, it is not a, a shameless plug by any means. I just really am passionate about the topic. Um, it's probably Austin Allison and Chris Smith's book, People Work. Um, have you uh, read that yet or had a chance to uh, read that? I have not, but uh, Austin, uh, Austin's going to be on the show. Um, I've been talking to Austin about having him on the show. I did not know he wrote a book. It's called what? Paperwork? It's called People Work. Oh, People, people Work. People, people, yep. And um, it's kind of how you, how you, um, how do you handle people basically in a digital world and how you run a people uh, type business. And that's really the passion behind stuff that I've talked about. I mean, it's not, not a matter of who came up with any idea first or second, but um, it's about, you know, how do you leverage today's consumer in a digital age? And it talks about that level of customer experience and how do you create that experience now? It's not about a shiny object. It's about the delivery of the experience using technology and the experience using different platforms. Got it. And that led to some things that I talk about called, you know, technology is not your differentiator. And people say, what do you mean by that? And I say, it's just, it's not about the shiny device. I am a tech person and a real estate person, but you could have, everyone could have an iPad means nothing to me. It's what do you use that iPad for? How do you, you let that customer get the information they want and give them what they need on demand so they have a good experience with you? That's the value of a technology. So, um, I think from that mentality of running a business today, whether it be real estate, mortgage, or any business, people work as a concept I really get behind and belief in um, even prior to their book coming out. So I'm a big fan of it. Uh, I love it, man. I, and that was a great explanation. So for everybody, uh, I don't know if they're going to be on Audible, but uh, if you want to copy of this book or any other book, you can it's just- on Amazon, I think, yeah. They're on Amazon right now, yeah. So you can just go to audibletrial.com slash superagentslive and get a, free, uh, get a free download of this book. Hey, Jeff. Thank you so much for coming on. I mean, it, I, I love to have guys like you who are, are so different from my normal guests and we talk about tech, talk about streams uh, of, of leads. So th thanks for coming on. And, uh, you know, maybe we, we'll, we'll have you bring it back on after you've done some office hours with Jeff and talk about some of the things that, uh, that uh, you're learning from that. Awesome. I really appreciate uh, being on the show. Thank you so much. Let, and by the way, let's wrap up. Just let everybody know where they can find you, Jeff. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, best way is my online uh, digital business card or social media business card. We can call it is uh, www.jlob.com. That's J-L-O-B-B -B as in boy.com. You can connect to all my social media, email me, text me, any feedback or any questions. I'll be happy to chat with y'all and um, see what we can do to help you. Yeah. And everybody out there, listen, you know, I, I always thank my guests for coming on the show. And if, you, if you've enjoyed this episode, you know, reach out to Jeff and, you know, and, and let him know that, uh, you know, that, that something resonated uh, with you and your business. So, hey, Jeff, thanks again. And let's let's keep in touch. Thanks, Toby. See you, bud. What a great episode. Hey, I know we talked about a lot in this in this uh, episode here. Um, I enjoyed it. I hope you did. If you did, you know what? Reach out to Jeff and say thank you. Um, I just want to remind you guys, you know, if you want access to, uh, all the future, uh, shows that we do, um, one thing you can do is, you know, just go to superagentslive.com and subscribe in iTunes. I would appreciate that. Um, and, uh, and if you go to the site, we've compiled all the, all the show notes and all the links, um, right there on our website. We may try to make it easy for you. And look, if you have resonated with something from this episode and you learned something that made your day a little bit better uh i would really really appreciate it if you could uh if you could give us some love on itunes man you know go and and give us a rating and review it really helps the show we were at one point we were number 72 in the business category uh, on itunes uh, and that's in the world that's a business is a big category and uh, we've slipped we've slipped because we've not gotten the ratings uh, we are i believe number 50 one or two in Stitcher. So that's cool. Um, and by the way, you know, look, we talked about lead generation a ton on this. So if you want early access to my lead generation product, um, you know, I'm pre-selling it. Uh, and, and it is uh, last month, I let it pre-sold some copies for 97 bucks. Um, this month, uh, it is uh, 197. And that is from now until the end of June. And uh, it's going to go up 100 bucks every month until it hits uh, 399 bucks. So if you're interested, uh, get in early. Okay. Hey, guys, go get them.